So can you own and charge three EVs on one charge circuit? The answer is yes, and we're gonna discuss that today. Hey guys, good morning. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new, thanks for tuning in. If you've been watching for a while, I can't believe you've put up with me this long. So for today's video, can you live with three EVs and only one circuit to charge them on? The answer is yes. So I initially shot this video and it was over 20 minutes long. It was kind of ridiculous. And I, so I wanted to condense it down. So you guys may have questions, leave them in the comments section below because I, I may, uh, this video may be a little bit shorter than it really needs to be. But uh, basically, um, we, uh, we've got three EVs and I'll list them for you and then I'll go into what we do for charging and also my charge philosophy. We've got my 2018 Tesla Model 3. We have this car, the Mini Cooper Electric, the Mini Cooper SE. And then we have a, uh, a 2014 Smart Electric Drive. Uh, the reason I'm in the uh, the Mini today and not the Tesla is because I am uh, I'm doing a bunch of work to it right now and uh, so I have videos coming up on that so that car was uh, sort of inaccessible for today so I'm I'm running to the bank and doing some other things uh, and I'm in the Mini. Alright so I've got uh, the three EVs that um, I park in such a way let's move over here so you can see I've got the Mini Cooper parked here got the Tesla and then in the back there I've got the little smart electric drive and I have them all parked in such a way that their charge ports are to the inside of the driveway here the center so there's one charge port for the Mini Cooper and then the Tesla charges right here and the smart electric drive charge port is right there so I've got the Tesla charge cord which more than easily reaches the car there that's always laying on the driveway in that spot. And then I've got my J1772 cord, which is long enough to reach the Mini Cooper and obviously long enough to reach the Smart. So that is my charge cord layout. So initially we bought the uh, the Model 3 and I had, that was my one car to charge. I have a 240, a NEMA 1450 240 outlet in my workshop that I bought an eight gauge uh, high current 50 amp uh, NEMA 1450 extension cord so that I could move the power from the outlet to the front of my garage because I don't park in my garage, it's a workshop. And um, so that worked great. Well, then we got the, the Smart and I got a, a J1772 charger for that car. And now we have the Mini Cooper. And initially I thought, well, I need three chargers and I looked into it. And the problem is the way my garage is laid out, access to the fuse panel, I mean, it's just nearly impossible. It, it, would, be, it would require heroic measures to be taken to, to run a second 240 circuit to where I, I need it to charge. So, so that leaves me with one charge circuit. Now, uh, it, Initially, I thought, well, this is going to be a problem, but it, it really isn't, and that's because of uh, what I call charge rotation. So I'll give you a couple of analogies or a couple of, of uh, scenarios or situations to kind of look at here. So let's say you've got three gas cars. Do you take all three gas cars to the gas station and gas them all up at the same time? No. For one thing, there, you know, you have to have three people take them all there, but they, you don't drive them all equally. They don't run through gas at the same rate. The gas tanks are a different size. Maybe one car is driven more than the other or whatever. So you bring them in as they need it. Well, same thing with electric cars. Now the difference is a lot of people like to pull their car in and, and plug it in overnight. They plug it in, they go in the house, they ignore it, let it charge all the way up. In the morning, they unplug it and go to work. Well, but still, that's actually, believe it or not, that's actually not good to do on most EVs. With the Tesla, it you can set the charge current on the screen and to have it charge to wherever you want. I stop my, my charge point at 80% daily, sometimes 90%, but you don't want to charge to 100% daily. It's, it's, not, it's not as good on the battery as if you were to stop at 80 or 90% charge. 
Well, our other two EVs, both this car and the smart car, you can't program in a stop time, nor is there an app that you can tell it to start charging or stop charging like the Tesla. So I keep it on my mind that I want to manually go out and unplug the two short range EVs, both the smart and the mini, at a point where I figure that it's probably at the charge point that I want it to be at, putting it in sport mode. Um, so I always have it in my mind about how long I want each car plugged in. Well, since I'm already monitoring in my own mind when to unplug it, I know what the rotation's gonna be. So uh, another analogy to give you would be having say five people living in a house with one bathroom and one shower. Well, does everybody need to shower at the same time? Well, no. There might be a little interference there, but maybe one person gets up at 6 a.m. and showers so they can get to work at 7. Someone else showers at 7 a.m. so they can get to work at 8. Another person maybe wants to shower at night before they go to bed, and everybody's got different schedules. The same holds true for EVs. So here's the way our daily routine, well, I'll give you a worst case a worst case scenario so worst case scenario for the most charging we could ever need I get up for work at about 6 a.m. I go downstairs and in the winter especially uh, I will go ahead and if the car is at 80% it's been plugged in overnight I get up in the morning it's at 80% I go into the the app and I turn the charge point up to 90% and I turn the cabin heat on this starts to add warmth to the battery while it's charging and warms the cabin. It takes about 45 minutes for me to do my paperwork for the day. I get my paperwork done, I leave for work. I unplug the Tesla and I plug in the Mini Cooper for my wife to work or, or to drive for the day. So I leave for work. She gets up, she's gonna run her errands. So the car has now been plugged in for 45 minutes or an hour and it's up there pretty high in charge, she unplugs it, plugs in the smart car, she leaves to run errands. My son then, uh, he we homeschool him, but he does some, has some classes at the community college, dual enrollment classes. So if he needs to use the smart, by the time he leaves, it's been plugged in for a while, he unplugs it and it's charged. They come home, my wife comes home from running errands, she can plug the, the mini back in, but it's probably got plenty of charge but she can always plug it back in. My son's not gonna be home till much later. He can come home, unplug the Mini, and plug in the smart car. By the time I get home from work, those cars are charged. And then I can unplug whatever car is currently plugged in, plug the Tesla in, and it will charge. So that would be a worst case scenario. But most days aren't even that way. Most days I get up and I know that there's a 70 or 80% charge on both the Smart and the Mini, so they don't need more charge, and it's healthiest to have the battery set toward the middle of a charge, not up high, so I don't plug them in. I just unplug the Tesla and go to work. My wife gets up, runs her errands. If the Smart car needs to be used, it'll get used, but my son only needs to drive 15 miles a day round trip, 20 at the most, so the 64 mile range that the Smart has is way more than he needs. My wife only drives this car 30 miles a day, so the 110 to, well this actually has more like 125 mile range is way more than she's ever gonna use. So it doesn't matter, even if they leave and each of their cars are at 50% charge, that's still more range than either of them is gonna need. So I come home from work, my car is at say 40% charge, the Tesla, so I'll plug it in. If, um, if my wife says that, oh, I'm gonna run errands, you wanna go with me, I may go out and unplug the Tesla and plug in the, the Mini for half hour, 40 minutes before we leave to peak a little bit of charge, but it's basically, it's never been an issue. There's never been a time yet that I've wanted to charge both cars, or all three cars, I should say, at the same time. Now, here's the thing. Even if I did, couple of things. First, well, even if I did need to charge, say, all three at the same time, the Mini has a battery that is less than half the size of the Tesla. It's like 40%, 35 or 40% size of the Tesla. And the smart car, that battery is, holy cow, it's like a sixth, a fifth or a sixth the size of the Tesla battery. So when we charge 
either the Mini or the Smart on level two, they charge very fast anyway, at about a four four hour charge a rate of charge from zero to 100%. So if I plug it in for an hour each car, I'm gonna get 25, 30% more charge in one hour. So they charge really quickly. But also that means that with the small batteries at level one, which is 110 volt charging, the Mini and the Smart will charge relatively quickly. Basically, the Smart will charge on 110 at the same speed the Tesla will charge at 240 volts, the same number of percentage per hour. So if I needed to charge all three cars, I actually have a 30 amp, 110 volt outlet in my garage because I have some, uh, some equipment that need that, um, need 30 amp or well 20 some amps at 110. So I've got a 30 amp circuit. So I can actually plug in two separate uh, level one chargers to there and I could plug in the mini and the smart car on level one 110 volt charging and they'll charge at about a 10 hour zero to full charge rate or somewhere thereabouts uh, zero to 100 percent charge rate while the Tesla's plugged into 240 and I could charge all the cars at the same time that way if I really needed to but I've never needed to do that so again I go back to just rotate it just rotate it for most people it's not going to be an issue at all and also it's really only going to be a concern if you have short range EVs with long range EVs like if you have two Teslas the odds that both people are going to be using up 300 miles a day is pretty much zero so most people that need to charge multiple EVs have short range EVs which means on level two they're going to charge so rapidly that what you plug one in for an hour and it it peaks it from where it was before you plug the other one in after that and it's not inconvenient. I've had people say, well, that's inconvenient. I want to unplug one car, plug in another. I don't go out and make special trips outside to do that necessarily. You know, I, I go out to, you know, go get the mail. Maybe I'll unplug a car, plug another one in. But, I, you know, anytime I'm outside, I may think about it. I just have a mental, keep mental track of, yeah, I'll plug in this other car. But usually it's done because a person that gets in the car that's currently plugged in will unplug it. And normally the other cars don't even need it. Again, we have way more time available to charge than we have need to charge the three cars on one circuit, even though we drive a lot. But so you, you unplug it, you lay the cord in the driveway, you, you drive off. But if you know somebody else needs it, well, you unplug your car, you plug in their car and you leave. It's only going to take a brief period of time to peak their charge anyway on, on uh, level two. So that's our philosophy. I have my Tesla charger and my J1772 run to one single Y connector. All right, so you can see here, we've got our normal J1772 plug, and I've also got my Tesla charge cord. Those both run underneath my garage door here. And uh, inside, I've got my Tesla charger plugged into uh, a Y adapter. And then I've got my uh, just basic J1772, that's a 32 amp, 240 volt uh, level two charger. Uh, those both plug into one line, one NEMA 1450 line, and that is eight gauge wire that I have running all the way back to my fuse box there. Uh, that goes to a single 240 outlet, and yes, it's safe and everything is overrated for what I'm pulling through it but that's the way we do it and um, it has worked fine I see absolutely no reason whatsoever for adding another charger to the mix so um, so that's that's the way we handle it you guys may have a different method but uh, but that's what we do so anyway, if you guys have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comments section below. I'm more than happy to answer whatever questions I can. Go ahead and subscribe, click the notification bell. And I got some cool stuff coming up. I've got videos on doing work to the Tesla. I'm putting my white 20 inch wheels back on with brand new tires. I just got mounted and balanced yesterday. I'm putting on my Mountain Pass Performance camber arms to compensate for the change of camber at the rear wheels when the car was lowered an inch a year back. So those are getting put on. I've got some spiffy, uh, uh, glossy carbon um, parts from uh, RPM Tesla that I'm installing on the car soon. So lots of stuff coming up on the Tesla. 
So yeah, if you guys have any questions, let me know. If you have any questions on this car, it's currently got 1,200 miles on it. We've been driving it a lot. Great car. Any questions about the smart electric drive, any of the EVs we own, leave them in the comments section below. So thanks, guys. I think that's it for me for today. Uh, you know, Please let me know if you have any questions. Anyway, thanks, guys. Have a great day, and as always, stay charged. Bye-bye now.